So Dr. Anna Lutif of the Bad Law Project gave a must-hear talk earlier this week. She speaks eloquently about the aims of her organization to abolish a program called Personal, Social, Health and Economic Education in UK Schools, or PSHE. And a draft for a schools and parental rights bill they're putting forward and their intent to file a class action lawsuit against the Department for Education. This talk is important for us in Australia because we get our negligence laws amongst other laws from the UK. The lawsuit will be filed on behalf of parents who claim their children will have been harmed by being encouraged to transition socially or medically. So their goal is similar to our AWW's project in defense of children. To one, educate and warn schools and parents of each state on the legal, social, medical harms of social transitioning. Dr. Anna Latif brings attention to sexual exploitation of children also, alleging that some PSHE materials and activities could potentially meet the definition of non-contact child sex abuse, which may constitute criminal offences under UK's Sexual Offences Act 2003. Come this Saturday, July 22, we, in defence of children, are collating 600 to 800 files we've collected from Australian versions of PSHE here in Australia. That's some material coming from rebranded Safe Schools Coalition material and Resilient Rights and Respectful Relationships, for example. <clears throat> we are collating content that into, into categories around sexual exploitation, identity Marxism, gender identity propaganda, and content that promotes the products and financial agenda of pharmaceuticals, medical groups, and trans lobbies. So I take no took note that seven key observations Dr. Latif's provided in her critique of PSHE, and we see similar behavior in Australia's school and curriculum. So number one, lack of clarity. Dr. Latif claims that the program, and in Australia, think of resilient rights and respectful relations, the sex education part, though mandated by statute to be taught, lacks clarity on what exactly should be taught. This ambiguity leads to confusion about what parts are mandatory and what parts parents can withdraw their children from. I'll add here in Australia what parts are even parents allowed to see. Outsourcing of PSHE teaching, number two. Dr. Latif argues that schools often outsource PSHE instruction to external companies, which the author criticizes for being charities funded by taxpayers, but lacking public accountability. Same here in Australia. We outsource sexual education, the response to the transgender issue to primarily trans lobbies. She makes allegations of child abuse and exploitation. Uh, Dr. Latif describes PSHE as a form of child abuse and exploitation, citing both mental and physical harm. And we cover that in our social transitioning and schools, risks and harms. She looks at potential violation of laws and rights. She claims that the way PSHE is currently practiced could violate certain laws protecting children, such as the right to family life, under Article 8 of the European Conventions on Human Rights. Now, we, when we went through the curricula, we found violations on a number of articles of the UN Conventions of the Rights of a Child, Articles 3, 5, 6, 13, 18, 29, and 36, i.e. respect the rights and responsibility of families to guide their own children as opposed to the state, respect children's privacy as girls in um, toilets without boys being present, that kind of thing, we found under the trans lobby guidance that the law given was given as they would like it to be. They presented it as they would like it to be rather than what the state law specifically said. Like, for example, the most common one was uh, they said boys have a right to be in the girls' toilets if they identified as a girl. 
But the law states otherwise that boys don't have a right to be in the girls' um, toilets, nor do they have a right to be on the sports teams over 12 years old. Uh, Dr. Latif criticizes the influence of political ideologies in PSHE, particularly related to LGBTQIA++++ rights, which she believes undermines parental jurisdiction. What we saw looking at rebranded safe schools programs uh, in the different states is something I think um, James Lindsay described as identity Marxism. Elizabeth Taylor, who's coming out very soon with an excellent gender theory explainer, explained to me that, well, she told me that most people are familiar with classical Marxist theory, which claims the roots of all social inequality is economic. It blames capitalism for the oppression of the masses and proposes abolishing private property as a remedy for that oppression. Now, in our history, seeing over 100 million killed, <laughs> people got a bit turned off by the Marxism. But in 1960s onwards, they pivoted to cultural Marxism. And there's a few flavors of cultural Marxism that are running in our generation. For example, here's three. Third wave feminism which sees gender as the main axis of oppression and proposes to tear down the patriarchy. Critical race theory focuses on race as the principal axis of oppression and takes issue with a systematic racism and queer theory, which is extremely strong in the curricula we've seen, which sees sexuality as the main axis of oppression and takes issue with heteronormativity. Of the latter, for example, we see LGBTQIA celebrated in course content, but straight is made to look boring. <laughs> E.g., you have no flag for straight, or if you do find a flag, it's a grey flag for being straight. And I even read a piece in Australia that said, straight is boring. There are 112 better genders for you to choose from. So we found also a flavour of Alfred Kinsey in some of the content, who believe that all sexual appetites should be normalized, and that included pedophilia. And we've been seeing a removal of safeguarding and ongoing push by ILGA members like Equality Australia, ACON, and their advocates to bring in the removal of parental safeguarding, lowering the age of sex, concepts of mature, minor, etc. So like us, she's, we, she saw promotions of gender identity ideology, and Dr. Latif is critical of the perceived promotion, that promotion of the gender identity issues with PSHE. She argues that children are encouraged to question their gender and consider gender transitioning. Are you really the sex? Are you really in the right body? Are you really the gender that you think you are? Which she sees as harmful and potentially unlawful. And I say in Australia, same, same. So what's exciting is they're taking legal action against the Department of Education. The Bad Law Project, as introduced by uh, Dr. Anna Latif, is preparing a class action lawsuit against the Department of Education for promoting gender identity in schools and allegedly neglecting its duty of care towards children. Yes. In AWW subcommittee in defense of children, we have a number of teachers and lawyers supportive of Simone Walker. She's produced this amazing um, guideline for teachers, independent Australian guidelines on sex and gender in schools. And myself's booklet, the one I wrote, on social transitioning in schools and risk and harms, focusing also on the breach of duty of care. So we're right behind anything that supports a legal action against departments of education that do, do this and against teachers and schools that do this as well. She also highlights and alleges that PSHE lessons encourage discussions about sexual arousal and stimulate, stimulation, which she deems inappropriate and potentially criminal. Um, she talks about sexual exploitation, like uh, she calls non-context sexual abuse. So sexual arousal, sexual stimulation, sexual pleasure, sexual touching and being touched, graphics, sexual images, talking about how to masturbate, getting the kids to question continually their well-being around their gender identity. So we are keen also to know if the content we're exposing from the schools also offers children the same protection of a non-contact contact sexual abuse. So if you know anything about that, please reach out to us on contact at awwa.services. 
Uh, but we have contacted, um, we've got three lawyers so far we've contacted, so we might might hear back soon on that. So these are the key observations and takeaways from her talk. I found it it's brilliant. Please go to uh, their Twitter account and see it. It's pinned on the top. And a reminder, July 22, our interviews at Children Committee are sorting through some six to 800 files. We've sorted, we're sorting on three major categories. If you've got suggestions, um, answer in the tweet that I'll put this video on. Uh, one, content that benefits medical and financial agendas. So social transitioning and medical transitioning course benefits pharma, HIV clinics, trans lobbies. Um, inviting gender clinic reps into the school, for example, like Victoria does a lot. Pushing PrEP and PEP, HIV drugs, STD drugs, so that uh, benefits HIV clinics and pharmaceutical organizations. Two, identity Marxism, anything around the belittling of heterosexuality or being straight. Anything promoting being white is inherently racist or privileged. Any victimhood narrative, anything that suggests you should not trust your parents over teachers or third parties or state officials. Anything about keeping secrets from parents. Three, gender identity ideology presented as religion or presented as fact. Anything that suggests you don't believe your eyes, you believe and said what's told to you. Um, gender identity ideology indoctrination, bullying, authoritarianism, coercion, uh, gender identity ideology policing. Like, for example, just this week, a parent told me uh, that her child showed her um, instruction that if someone misgenders someone, even if you don't know them, you take your fingers and you snip, click them underneath, snap them underneath their noses to remind them not to, uh, to use the appropriate uh, pronouns. So as a parent, if you'd like to halt the harm, the indoctrination and the hypersexualization of kids in our Australian schools, please join us and go to In Defense of Children um, school resources uh, link and share the resources with your friends and your school teachers. We've got lots of flies if you want to start conversations in your schools or just get a quick a read up of what's going on. Otherwise, just look at our website and feel free to join and talk to us and find out what's going on in Australian schools that you need to know about that's impacting the whole of our society. Thank you.